welcome to this presentation on a graphical method for determining trust stability. My name is Cameron Miller and I will be taking us through this research project which extends the framework of graphic statics to study the stability and stiffness of pin jointed trusses. This paper was awarded the Hangai Prize for 2020. It is a great honour to have been awarded this prize and I'm very grateful to the committee, organisers and the IASS team for all of their work. I would also like to thank Alan McCroby of the University of Cambridge for his support and advice throughout this project, along with everyone at Emmanuel College. I would also like to thank Bill Baker of SOM, who initially inspired this project, but also for his guidance and thoughts during this research. I'm very grateful to everyone that made this possible. It feels very special to be wearing this medal, and thank you to everyone that was involved with this. Graphic statics is a graphical method for describing the equilibrium of pin-jointed frameworks. Pioneered in the 19th century by the likes of Maxwell, Cremona, Rankin and Coleman, it describes both the form of the structure and the forces within the structure. It has been used extensively in design, including by Robert Meyer. It has recently seen a resurgence in popularity due to modern computational power which allows the designer direct control of the process. Graphic statics relies upon two reciprocal figures, the form diagram which describes the structural geometry and the force diagram which describes the forces within the structure. It is possible to manipulate either and then observe the impact that this has on the other. The ability to design the form and the forces within the structure is very powerful. The forces are closely related to a discrete area stress function over the form diagram which can also be designed. Previously, graphic statics has only been concerned with equilibrium. It investigates whether the force polygon at a given node closes. Whilst equilibrium is necessary, it is not sufficient. The structure must also be stable. This research aims to integrate stability considerations into the existing methodology of graphic statics. From here, it is possible to design the stability and stiffness of a structure, as well as the forces within it. Why is this important for pin-jointed trusses with inextensible members? Well, either such trusses contain no mechanisms and are rigid, or they contain mechanisms which must be stabilised. These mechanisms can only be stable via a set of forces such as a pre-stress within the structure. A good example of such structures are tensegrity structures such as this recent exhibit at Goodwood Festival of Speed. They contain mechanisms which are stabilised by a pre-stressing of the framework. Such pre-stress stability is the focus of this research. The work done by nodal motion D is given by this equation where K is a stiffness matrix. This stiffness matrix can be written in different forms, but here we use this form from rigidity theory, where A is the equilibrium matrix, G is a matrix of modified axial stiffnesses, and S is the stress matrix, which has terms of force density. The reason for choosing this form of the stiffness matrix is that mechanisms lie in the left null space of the equilibrium matrix, so the first part of the stiffness matrix can be ignored. Expanding the stress matrix and considering no the nodal displacements, the work done can be rewritten as a summation where T over L is the force density in a bar and B minus A is the motion of one end of the bar relative to the other in the mechanism. This equation clearly relates to the stiffness provided by the force density terms. The force density has an unclear meaning within graphic statics, so this is reworked into this new equation where phi is the rotation of the bar in the mechanism or B minus A over L. The TL term has a clear meaning within graphic statics, and so this can be leveraged to find the work done by a mechanism. The work done can also be related to the stiffness of the mechanism, where KS is an effective stiffness, and delta is the displacement of the mechanism. This also relates to the load applied to the mechanism, F delta, and the displacement delta. Therefore, when the mechanism is loaded by a force, F delta, it is possible to use KS to calculate the displacement of the mechanism delta. This stiffness analysis goes beyond the initial question, is this mechanism stable or unstable? All that needs to be considered is the sign of the work done or effective stiffness. If the work done or effective stiffness is positive, then it is stable. Similarly, if it is negative, then it is unstable. A zero value indicates mutual stability. Returning to graphic statics, we want to know the TL term in the work equation. This manifests itself clearly in the maxwell minkowski diagram. Take the form diagram which has bars of length L. From this, it is possible to generate the force diagram which has lines of length T. Every line in the form diagram has a corresponding perpendicular line in the force diagram whose length is the force in the bar. 
replacing each node in the form diagram by a scaled version of the reciprocal force diagram polygon and joining them up produces rectangles of area TL. This area is signed for tension and compression. This is called the maximum Minkowski diagram. Turning to the equation for work done, we can now see how the TL term can be obtained through graphic statics. Therefore, this equation is just the weighted sum of the maximum Minkowski diagram, where the weight is the square of the rotation of the bar. This theoretical background can easily be extended to consider more cases. For example, it immediately generalises to the 3D with Rankine stress functions and Rankine Minkowski diagrams. It is also possible to consider multiple mechanisms within the same truss and determine whether the global structure is stable and which mechanism is the least stiff. The mechanisms and states of self-stress which are integral to this methodology can also be found through graphical methods. Numerous papers by the likes of Alan McCroby exist on this. Furthermore, when performing this analysis you obtain an effective stiffness of the mechanism. It is also possible to find an effective mass for a given mechanism and then use Rayleigh's principle to estimate the natural frequency of the mechanism. Enough theory for now, I want to demonstrate that this method works and is easy to do. Let us start by looking at Jessen's isosahedron tensegrity. The mechanism for this tensegrity is well known and none of the compression struts rotate. This means that the only contributions to the effective stiffness are positive and therefore the tensegrity is necessarily stable. There is no maths or matrices needed, it is just there. Another example is Maillard's roof at Chiasso. This has a significant historical background due to Maillard's pioneering design process. Using this methodology shed some interesting light on the stability of the truss. Small changes to the pitch and the geometry of the column supports can have a large impact on the stability of the truss. Whereas previously any of these equilibrium solutions would have been considered reasonable, it now becomes clearer how different features affect the stability of the truss. With this knowledge, it is possible to not only design an equilibrium solution, but also a stable solution. A separate paper has been submitted to SEI which discusses this in greater depth. Another useful example is a tensegrity domes designed by David Geiger. A simplified 2D model is an extension of the desires configuration and has a one state of self-stress and one mechanism. This geometry is stable with the two vertical struts in compression. When the mechanism is loaded, it deflects into the mechanism shape. The deflections predicted through the equivalent stiffness method have been compared to experimental results as well as results from finite element analysis. The results compare very well for small deflections. For larger deflections, an analysis closer to a non-linear process is needed. This is discussed in a separate paper in this conference. A similar tensegrity structure with cross-central members also possesses one mechanism and one state of self-stress. The stability of this structure is more sensitive to the geometry. This example is stable and so, when loaded, can support the load applied. In this example, the angle between the wires at the end of the plywood is less than 90 degrees in contrast to the previous example. This means that the framework is unstable and so cannot even support its own weight. Even though this is an equilibrium solution, it is not a stable one. I hope that you enjoyed this presentation and the accompanying paper. We refer you to the paper for further details. Please also feel free to reach out to us if you have any further questions or would like to discuss possible future collaboration. Thank you for watching this video presentation. I'd like to welcome any questions from the virtual audience.